Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Zeppelin. Welcome back to the channel. It has been a while. I hope you're doing well. And today I have a brand new video for you and one that's a little different than what I've done before. I'm very excited to make this for you. So let's get right into what it is. So as some of you may know, I'm kind of an avid Warzone player. I love playing Call of Duty. I love playing Warzone. And I thought I'd make an interesting video talking about some of the guns that I use in Warzone, some of the guns that are good at the moment, and then show you some gameplay footage and try to teach you how you can get better at certain elements of the game. If you never know the classes to run, and if you never know why people are always getting the drop and the advantage on you in game, then this is a video you do not want to miss. I will be going through all of these things going through multiple different weapons going through multiple different gameplay scenarios all of which I've already recorded that we are going to be looking back on and analyzing now so without further ado let's get straight into the guns which my past self has already recorded so let's hand it over to him I hope you enjoy and then after that stick around because we are going to be reacting to some gameplay I got with those guns talking about how I managed to get those kills and hopefully that should help you get the competitive advantage when you play Warzone. So without further ado, let's get into it. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, I want to start this video off by running through each one of my classes that I have here on my edit loadouts that I have set up for Warzone. I want to talk about each gun, talk about why I've chosen each gun, why I've chosen the attachments on each gun, and where I think these particular guns suit in certain scenarios, and what you may feel will work for you. Okay, so what you will see here first is my Milano A21 class. Now, the reason I have chosen the Milano is because it is just one of the best all-rounders for an SMG in Call of Duty Warzone. What you'll find with the Milano, while I haven't personally used it too much, is that you can do most things relatively well with it, and it's one of the best all-rounded guns in the game. If you need to hit and engage with long range and you don't have your AR on you, or you're out of ammo, have not reloaded, or even just want to use it as some form of AR if you think that's the way you want to go, the Milano can do that. If you want to win gunfights up close range, the Milano can also do that. You can make the class very versatile and you can do anything with the gun based on its attachments. The attachments that I have on this gun here are more for a closer range engagement. I am very much an either AR sub or sniper and sub type of player. I like to get in close range where I can and I would not want to be relying on a sub to do any long range gunfighting for me. But anyway, if you are looking for a gun that is just all round consistent and you need something that is consistent for you as a player, maybe you're an entry level player into Warzone, then I would highly recommend getting the Milano ranked up, getting all the attachments on it and playing some games with it and seeing how you feel with it. Okay, so just quickly before we talk about the next gun, something that you may notice already with all of my classes is that they are ghost classes. Now, a lot of people will tell you to have a few ghost classes and a few overkill classes. The overkill classes will mean that you have a secondary gun to go in with straight away so that you can have your AR and sub without needing to hit a loadout twice. However, I really do value ghost over anything else. I like to remain hidden as much as I can on a map, especially as I'm a as I'm a close range player, that involves me being more sneaky. So I don't want to go around, eventually be caught because someone's put up a UAV or someone has a heartbeat sensor and it ruined my close range plays. Now that is just a personal choice. If you're maybe more of a longer range player and you want to sit up in a place, have people know where you are as you're trying to pick them off, then it isn't really that big of an issue for you. However, personally, I will always go for Ghost. All of my classes are set for Ghost. And if you are a close range player who's gonna predominantly be using your sub anyway, Ghost is what I would highly recommend most of the time. So let's move on to what would probably be my favorite gun to use at the moment, or should I say maybe overall in Warzone in the last year, and that is the Mac 10. The Mac 10 is such a great weapon for heavy close range engagements. Now it is a weapon you probably won't be able to wipe a full team with in one run. You're going to need to be able to dance around the team, get those reloads in, and then get back into the gunfight. But it's a gun that is very quick to kill one person. If you have a throwing knife on you, which I do here, you can get that down person killed quick, maybe even take a second down and then get out of there to reload. It is a weapon that is very quick to use, gives you a lot of mobility so you can get around corners quickly. And especially in maps like Rebirth, which is what we are going to be playing a bit of now soon, it is a gun that is very good for just getting around the map quickly and getting the kills, which is really what you're going for in Rebirth. Rebirth would be a mode that I'd say it's more about the kills that you can get than the win, but of course when we play, 
we're going to be going for both. But the MAC-10 is a gun that I would highly recommend for anyone who really, really likes their tight, close engagements gun fights. Quick to use, quick to kill. The attachments I have on it here are just attachments that make it better close range. The Tiger Team Spotlight helps its hip fire accuracy. 53 round drum just to put as much bullets into people as I can before reloading and all of the other stuff just to keep it quiet and help with mobility and help with hip fire accuracy. This is a great weapon of choice for any close range gunfight and I highly recommend it. Okay, so here we have my current favorite AR, the C5A. Now you may be asking why is this my favorite AR? Well, I will answer that for you. I am a close range player, as I have mentioned already. I like to use my MAC-10 and that's the gun I like to use to get in, finish kills and finish people off. Now, the C58 is an AR that is not very good at very long range due to its massive recoil. However, the headshots that you hit with this thing do so much damage. And if you are at a medium range, someone's on a head glitch, you need to put a couple of bullets into them before you go around for the finish, or hell, even take them off that head glitch. The C58 can do it in four bullets, even if they're fully armored. The power from this gun is ridiculous. It is very quick to kill, provided you hit your shots, which again is hard due to the recoil, but it just does the job so well for the circumstances that I find myself in. A lot of other players would recommend the Farah for more all-round AR as it's got great stability in comparison to this, but if you can keep this thing as steady as you possibly can, it is a great weapon to have alongside your sub and I feel like the two work really well off each other. So I highly recommend the C58 if you feel like you've got it in you to handle this weapon's recoil. Okay, so up next we have the Bullfrog. Now, the Bullfrog isn't actually a weapon that I would use as much, but Bullfrog, again, is more of an all-round versatile submachine gun, with the biggest perk being that you can hold 85 rounds in that drum, meaning that you could probably get about three people killed before you need to go and reload. It's not quite as good in some other areas as other submachine guns would be, but it is definitely a gun that I recommend you using. Now, if we were to put some attachments on this, as you can see, I just wiped the attachments. I would definitely go for something like the Growl Suppressor, although the Sound Suppressor could work just as well. 85 round mag has to go on there straight away, without question. When it comes to the barrel, I'd like to put on the Task Force, because again, this is a gun we'd be using close range. I don't really care about controlling its recoil so much, I just want it to move quickly. There's, no really need, there's not really any need to put an Optic on it, because the Optic on this gun does a great job as it is. So we're just going to put the KGB skeletal stock on there to increase movement time while that affects hip fire accuracy. It's important with this gun to be able to move fast as you will probably be aiming with the sub more so than hitting hip fires. And then lastly, we're going to put the VDV speed grip on. I know it decreases movement speed, but it increases sprinting move speed, which if you're in close range engagements, you're probably going to be doing way more sprinting anyway. All right, so the second last gun that I'm going to be talking about here is the nail gun. Now, let me tell you why I like this nail gun so much. You are never going to get a team wipe with this thing. You cannot put any attachments on this and it only has 20 rounds in the mag. However, when I say that you cannot get a team wipe, what you can do is take people down one at a time really quickly. This kills in about four to five bullets easy and feels very powerful in the hand. So if you are around a team, you can put one down, get out of there, get a relatively quick reload, get, get in, take another one out get out another quick reload until you have that full team gone it's very powerful for a sub it is one that is a little harder to use long range because of the bullet travel time however if you are on a map like rebirth you are stuck in a building with someone and you need to get a quick kill and get out the nail gun does that super well it is up there with the milano for me at the moment although i would expect a nerf for this weapon to come soon so do not expect this weapon to be as good as it is right now for the upcoming months if it's a weapon you want to try and want to try and do well with use it now while you still can okay last but not least we have the farah 83 this is a weapon to use if you do not want your shot to move the control on this thing is super super good it's very easy for newcomers who may not be good with handling recoil to use if you get the right sight on it you get so much accuracy no matter what the distance and while it may lack a little bit on power, it more than makes up for it on the amount of bullets you can hit based off the amount you have in a clip, which is, of course, 60 rounds. 
There is not much that I can actually say about this gun other than that it is a brilliant piece of kit that is easy to use for newcomers. If you are new to the game you want to get better, this is the AR to go for to train your shot until eventually you may feel more comfortable to run onto other guns like the C58. But even this is sometimes just better to run overall than the C58 as it can do a job at longer ranges. So this could potentially be the gun for you if you are an AR player. Personally it's not for me because I'm more of a sub player but I highly recommend it to any of you who like running an easy to use AR. Okay, so without further ado, we're going to play a couple of games. Let's move right into a game of Rebirth, Resurgence, Quads and see how we get on. Okay, so now that you have seen me talk about some guns, this is gameplay that I then recorded a few days later with a friend of mine that I normally play Warzone with. There is no volume on this now just for the sake of the recording because I want to talk about the gameplay instead of having to listen to the the conversations that was going on within the game i didn't record those audios separately so whenever i say there's a sound made you're just going to kind of have to trust me in that there was a sound made here in terms of what i was hearing but i still think i should be able to give you a fair enough tutorial into how i got certain kills and how i made certain plays within the game so without further ado let's go on to the first moment here and analyze what had happened okay so at this point in the game i am running towards my teammate who i know is in a gunfight as you can see on the menu here it says that he has downed and finished one person now of course we are playing on rebirth and this is quads at the moment there's only two of us in this lobby he's killed one that means there's most likely going to be people following up to him and as the shots are still going on which i can hear there are shots still going i know that there are people probably chasing him down and a 3v1 scenario is very hard but if you can play off trades, you have a very good chance of even wiping a full team provided your gun skill is there. And I know he's going to be in trouble, which is why I'm running to him as fast as I can to try and help him out. Okay, so at this point, this is why I ran to him when I did, is because that when he is doing damage to people, all the other people that he's doing damage to are vulnerable very vulnerable so when you're playing with the team it is very important that you have that trust and reliance reliance in your teammates to know that maybe even if you go down or die that then your teammate is going to be able to come and clean up the kills and either rescue you or clean up the kills kills and avenge you and in scenarios like that especially in rebirth where you have a very quick time to respawn into the battle royale especially early on it is worth almost sacrificing yourself to put those bullets into people damage them and have your teammate come and clean it up now i would only recommend doing something like that if you are talking with your teammates and there are people you play with regularly if you are on playing with randoms there's a very good chance people are going to be selfish and playing for themselves and not looking to back you up so they might even come to swoop the kills they might just go off and do their own thing and you will have died for nothing but it's very important in this scenario to know that if you are in my position that you should try your best to run to your teammates help them out and you can get a very easy wipe like i just did there but now this clip is not over it's very important to hear what happens next and this is a big thing for you as a player if you feel like people are always getting the drop on you it's a little tactic that people use to get the advantage over players and it's through the use of sound which you won't be able to hear here but i will tell you what happens so obviously i'm doing a bit of looting here i'm going to go for the res now at this point as i just run to his body i hear a door open I'm not quite sure where, I couldn't tell whether it was above me or below me or a footstep on a tin roof, but I heard something that indicated to me there is another player in the vicinity. Now, a lot of mistakes, or a big mistake that players make when they are playing, is that they will run straight for the revive. However, when you do that, a lot of people don't seem to be aware that when you go for a revive, it makes a very audible revive noise. And that is an indication to other players around you that you currently have your weapon down trying to get your teammate back up you're very vulnerable and exposed and easy to kill so a big tactic here that i use that i highly recommend you use in your gameplay is called tapping someone well i call it tapping someone i you can call it tapping someone call it whatever you want so it's essentially when you just tap the revive button on your teammate so it makes the audible noise of reviving but then you come off it and wait for the other players to push you because they will hear that think you're reviving someone and go in for the push thinking that they are going to get the easy kill whereas in fact you are there ready and waiting and actually have the drop on them as you will see here so we're going to go back 10 seconds i get the down i get the finish most likely someone else around 
I hear the audio, so I wait a second, go for the tap, let go, and here he comes. And I get the down. That is so important for you in your gameplay to know that that is the right thing to do, is that go for the tap and someone will come running if you know that they are nearby. All right, so I'm going bringing you over here now to another situation that me and my teammate found ourselves in where we heard at least one person underneath us or around us. Now, we originally thought it was one person, but when you are playing, you have to always keep in mind that there most likely is more than one person playing in quads and people could have things like dead silence and all trying to get around you. So even if you only hear one, try and play it as if there is more. Now, in this, I'm standing above a tin roof thinking that there might be an entrance or exit underneath me, but I don't find them. It's actually my teammate who finds the people who start shooting at him, at which point I instantly go to help, as you will see here. So he starts shooting, I come round, and here's the gunfight now. We find ourselves in a situation where I have spotted the two of them, but I am still only under the impression at the time that there is one. Even though I said you always expect two, you can make mistakes in the scenarios, and I thought there was only one. So what I did at this point here comes back to what I said earlier about your trust in your teammates. I trusted that my teammate had already done damage to at least one of them. So I ran in knowing that me being full health and him being the primary target, I would have the advantage in terms of getting bullets into people. And that is what happens here. So the first guy is nearly full health, which I managed to down. And at which point I've already taken a bit of damage and I'm actually quite fearful for my life here. But again, the trust in my teammate, knowing that he is a good player and does good things, paid off is that the second guy was weak enough for me to go straight in and finish him rather than running off and of course he's self-reviving i throw the throwing knife at him and that's that section done now in so many scenarios some people could try a long flank which would be too late my teammate could have been dead some teammates would just run off entirely some teammates would wait until my teammate had already been killed to try and have a safer swoop in to steal the kills but again coming back to having trust in teammates is that i also trusted that i would be able to go in and at least do enough damage wherein if i had gone down or even died the my teammate would definitely be able to finish them off and that's all that's what it comes down to at the end of the day is just being able to trade off your team it is the biggest point i could make in terms of succeeding in warzone okay so here's another situation we're going to talk about here where i don't in fact get many kills but it's one of those situations where i understand that i'm in a little bit too much trouble and i decide to duck out so but 30 seconds ago my teammate had died and he went down i managed to get one kill but i knew there was another team a full team at least around me and i wanted to try and wait the 30 second timer to get my teammate back now i did get my teammate back but all the while things started getting a little hectic around me as other teams were fighting So at this point here in the gameplay, I've just heard someone being revived, but I'm not quite sure as to where. I knew it was above me, but I couldn't tell where, so I go looking. This precision airstriking coming was quite dangerous, but I also knew that if I was quick enough, I could maybe get out and sneak a kill and then get back in and be safe. Ultimately, I wanted to make sure that because I heard someone was being revived, I knew that even though he could have been faking, there was someone in a vulnerable position and I had the belief that I could go and get that kill. Now, as you can just see here in the screen, they literally just get this revive finished and I managed to down and finish one. With And that precision airstrike is now coming in, but I'm running inside as fast as I can. Now, note that I only have 14 bullets in my clip and that was very important for what is about to come up through this door. I run in. And there are two people right here, both on the same team. Now, there's a precision airstrike outside, so it's dangerous for me to go back out. I only have nine bullets now after firing some at them, so I do not have enough in the clip to do any sort of damage whatsoever. I see that my teammate has just landed back in behind me, as you can see on the map on the top left-hand corner. So I decide to back out and take my chance in backing out and hope that I don't get hit by the precision airstrike. I back out, run, get into the other building, get reloaded and get myself play hit up as soon as possible to go and help the teammate. This is very important to know that in when you are playing Warzone is that sometimes when you're on a good game or you're in a run of things, you can get overconfident in your ability. And a lot of the time it is important to know when to give up a gunfight or even leave it for your teammate to do some work while you heal up or get reloaded. Playing smart is the key to playing well in this game. 
except of course when you run into corner campers otherwise you're just screwed but my point being is that just play safe where you need to get your kills get out don't try and do the ultimate play all the time because if i had stayed in that situation tried to melee one of them take them one of them with me i would have been dead and we probably would have finished way worse in this game than we did so play safe where you know you need to play safe okay so here we have another interesting scenario that i want to talk about with you guys so i am just after landing back in my teammate just got killed directly underneath me which put forward my timer enough for me to be able to land back in now i know there's more people on him and he is going to be in trouble straight away as we see here there's bullets coming at him his health is going down he's in a gunfight but i heard that this guy had a very powerful gun and i also heard that my teammate wasn't doing well in the gunfight i knew he just killed someone so i land to get the gun however i have trusted in the teammate in this instance that he must have done enough damage to this guy to put him in a position where he could be vulnerable so i pick up whatever gun i find off the floor and i go straight in to try and get the kill now I wasn't quite sure where he was here but at this point I had literally just heard him to my left on the other side of this wall put on an armor plate again this plays into how important sound is when you're playing this game so here I'm put on the armor plate so I know he's vulnerable so I go and move in try for the kill he starts to move because he realized that I was there as well leaving me in a dangerous position as he has gotten the first shot to me and I am not fully plated at this point I start interesting movement let's actually go back there really quick because i want to show you the movement here and how important it is so first off he thinks i'm going right i don't i go left this movement how, and how i end up getting the kill this is one of the biggest things that i could teach you when it comes to playing warzone do not make your movement predictable go left and then right and then left again you know make it difficult for the player to be able to track your movement make them have to guess where to pre-aim rather than knowing where to pre-aim if you are moving about so sort of radically then all they can do is really guess rather than being able to read your movement so shifting from that left to right position or from that right to left what i did there is that he pre-aimed there a second extra to make sure that i didn't come back however because i went proper far to the right and then turned back to the left I caught him in a position where he was just taking his gun down to go out that door meaning that I was able to get a couple of shots into him and I caught him off guard at that point then we were both even on health and when he hopped out to get onto the chair as you can see where he died here it was merely up to who would hit as many of their shots as quickly as possible but through the movement that I used in that pit that you've just seen I evened the score a little bit meaning that it would ultimately come down to gun skill Okay, so here we have another scenario where I'm only going to show you the end of it. This scenario went on for about a minute or two. There was a lot of players. They started chasing me. I fall back. They all fall back as well. They don't push. However, one has stayed in the building. I am weak and not in a position where I want to push him on my own because I know that my teammates are too far away from being able to help me. So there's going to be no way to trade off at all. It'd be all or nothing. However, at this point, I know my teammates have started to come to me as they have told me on the mic so i am more confident in the fact that i'll be able to pinch this now so i go in and make the move so i'm hearing things i'm hearing him run in there i'm marking for the teammates as i'm not speaking on the mic at the moment so there i get the first glimpse of the guy we trade our first shot so we both know that we're there now both know that we are ready to engage he thermites me so I make a move for the window. Now he has made his move to the window as well. So we are both caught in a position where we are relatively surprised by each other's appearance there. So it's going to come down to who can get turned the quickest. Now I start pre-firing because I know I don't want to leave my shots late. And so spinning around as quick as I can. So I managed to get the kill there. And the only reason I managed to get that kill is through something that has been used in Call of Duty for the longest time. And that is drop shotting. Now you can play it, I think, as a bumper jumper or something on a controller to be able to drop shot easier. But to drop shot well, I really do recommend getting a pro controller like a Scuff or a Razer or a Nacon. The controllers that I have done plenty of reviews on on my YouTube channel already because that is what these controllers are for at the end of the day. is easy access to buttons where you can keep your hands on the triggers and on the thumbsticks while being able to make movements such as this. Let's rewind that really quickly to see how the drop shot actually ends up working for me. So we're both turning as fast as we can he shoots for the head i drop meaning he misses a couple of bullets whereas i'm able to keep track on him 
the whole time, making it just easier for me to get the kill and making me harder to hit. So I know you might get sick of people drop shotting, you see it around the place, you think people are try hard and so much, but drop shotting almost becomes second nature after long enough of playing. It's not something that's relatively hard to do, but if you can do it, I promise it will elevate your game to a whole new level and make you way harder to hit. So I highly recommend in your gunfights where drop shotting is usable, definitely do it. Okay, so here we have another situation where I think I'm going to show you multiple little clips of this situation where there's a full team here, my teammates have died, they land back on me, and the enemy land back on, on me as well, and it becomes a whole situation, but this is a rel essentially how it starts off. Both my teammates go down, I see one here who's on his own, and again, I get the quick drop shot heal as he is run down from where my teammates were to heal thinking he's safe, but I took up a flank position to choke them into the one area again. Another thing that is very important for playing Call of Duty with your teammates is knowing which areas to pinch at what moments and that'll all come down just to experience of playing with other decent people. So I've just skipped forward a little bit there. I was just camping in this room waiting for my teammate to be able to get guns and sort himself out and at this point he calls to me that they are on him so I begin to make the moves. He gets him down but again he's done enough damage to him and I trust my teammate to know that I can just hop out and get this finish so I take him out no issues. Now, I know that there's more people around, so I'm very careful as to going for the revive in this because I can see in the UAV that there's one above me and I'm pretty sure there's another one ghosted as well. So it's dangerous to go straight for the revive in this scenario. Again, out there, I hit a quick tap just to try and lure anyone out who might go for this kill. No one comes out at this point, so I just stick the revive. My teammates are calling that they reckon they will not come out, so I take the chance to go for the revive, but at this point, I've started to hear footsteps come closer. So I hop off it again, see nothing, go for it again, because the footsteps must be just above. But then, he actually hops out. Now, I've been caught in a scenario where I have messed up with the revive and put us both in serious danger. However, there is one thing here that is going to save me, and it's right in front of your eyes, and it's this pillar. This comes back to what I was saying earlier about your movement and how your movement can be so important for you getting kills and using your environment to your advantage. At this point, I'm moving left or right around this pillar, knowing that it is my primary area of cover. He hops back out the window. I have stuck to around the pillar and the steps, not moved very far. This guy looked the wrong way, which was a bit fortunate for me. He started off by looking the other way and then turning, giving me the chance to actually get the kill on him. Okay, so now we're at a scenario where I'm on the same roof in the same game, and I see someone across that another roof, and I know I have a relatively powerful gun. At this point, he starts moving to get back towards proper cover, and I am on a roof, and I know that I will be able to hit my shots. So I knew I had no armor because I put a couple into him earlier that I just didn't show in the clip, and I down him. Now, he just gets behind cover here. It's early on in the game, so I know there's a very good potential of him having quick revive. So I stick it out, he pops back up, and I get the down. And I manage to then just finish him off, and there you go, another kill on the board. So it's very important to realize when you're playing Warzone that there is a huge possibility that your teammate may, or the enemy that you're shooting may have something like Quick Revive, which will make it very difficult for you. It can catch you off guard if you're not aware of that, and they could hit, either hit you, put bullets in you, especially if their other teammates are around. They could be the entire reason why you lose simply because you didn't finish a kill while they were on the ground. So always keep an eye out for that and always be aware of that. Okay, so now we're in an interesting situation here. This is that end game. There is four teams left. I have on nine kills. I didn't show the rest of the kills because they were relatively easy kills. My teammates done a lot of the work in this regard. But I had died just out of zone, as you can see by my orange mark based off the map. I had died out of zone. I was coming back. I figured, oh no, there is no way I'm going to be able to do anything here to help my teammates in the final gunfights. However, I had just noticed at this point that as you can see on the or on the minimap on the screen that the zone is moving over to the left and there is a very good potential in how this zone is moving that it could go over my loot or just close enough to where my loot is lying that I'll be able to go in and get my gun so I can help out at least in the final gunfight so I land in here I'm hovering just to be careful because I knew where the people that killed me were just underneath so I got very lucky in the fact that my teammates were able to land in here and finish these kills so now that they were dead, I knew I had a free chance to go and get my loot. So I sacrificed a bit of health, 
get the guns that I need, get my satchel, and get out of there. Now, I believe that my teammates are in trouble here. So rather than actually helping them knowing that I am weak, I decide I will play for the zone. Some people may consider it selfish and I can understand why, but if I was able to get a good position in the zone, whoever would be left after my teammates had maybe died and done the damage, I would be in a good position to finish them off and then we would all win the game together. Rather than running in with them and maybe dying, potentially when the people who killed them might have the advantageous position. So here I'm just, you know, plating up, playing it slow, making sure that I'm being safe. But my teammates are actually finishing kills relatively well here. You know, they're they're in less trouble than I thought they were. So my main my main teammate went down. The zone is moving back the way, but then I get a call as to where the last people are. They're all underneath in the alleyway. So I managed to finish off one, it's a 2v1 at this point, I see him in there, I know me and my teammate have it, so I run in into the corner, and you know he's in trouble, lie down, finish it, and that's where we finish the game. 10 kill game, all through playing with my teammates for the majority of the game, throughout that game, which I didn't really show there, we were holding prison for the majority of it, we got the roof on lockdown, and yeah, it just ended up going really well, all, all of us got a lot of kills together, and it ended up being a very good game. And in that game, I used all of the things that I have talked about throughout this video onto how to boost your Warzone performance. Okay, so that is the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, but let me know what you think. Did you love it? Hate it? Think I think I rambled a bit too much? I think that the stuff I said wasn't helpful or too obvious? Anything that you, any criticisms, comments that you have, make sure to leave them down in the comments below. Make sure to leave a like on the video. Make sure to subscribe to see more videos like this in future if you enjoy them. I've still got a Cold War video or a Call of Duty Cold War video in the pipeline at the moment that I am making, so do stick around for that. Make sure to check me out on Twitch where I'm streaming regularly and all my other social media. The link towards them is in my bio or section below. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. I hope I improved your shot. Peace.